Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a program manager at Public, which is a technology company that helps to build better government services. I work on our programs team, where we work with a range of learning programs and challenge-based programs. One of our most exciting and innovative challenge programs we run is alongside the Ministry of Justice, where we run ran the Prison Leavers Innovation Challenge. This was a part of the Three Stand project, which was a 20 million government project to help reintroduce prison leavers back into society. We were lucky enough to be the delivery project on the Prison Leavers Innovation Challenge, which specifically focused on how digital solutions could help address challenges that prison leavers face. In organising this progress program, we had several stages. The first being our delivery stage, where we did a huge amount of research into what are the challenges that prison leavers currently face and how we could utilise digital and technology to help solve them. The first thing we wanted to do was come up with a framework where we could show the different areas ahead to ensure that we have fantastic and feasible challenges. As you can see here on our heptagon, our challenges had to be desirable, actionable, robust, measurable, inclusive, feasible, and most importantly, novel. This was an SBRI initiative, which meant that we were looking for new, innovative solutions that were novel and specifically focused on the needs and uses for the prison leavers, as opposed to rote learning techniques that would be simply applied. This meant that we were really encouraging small initiatives such as startups and SMEs to apply, as typically government contracts go to large-scale entrepreneurs or deliverables. We wanted to make an inclusive and open challenge to ensure that people's needs were met by companies that were agile enough to fit them. Our challenges end up coming from a range of solutions, but the six key ones that we found after rigorous user testing were focusing on how to inform, coordinate and update stakeholders of prisoners' day of release. When someone is released, often the timings can be difficult, they have multiple appointments to get to, and are unsure who the key people are to connect to. This is something we found out during the multiple prison leaver panels that we did, and by consulting with our service communities. Our next challenge focused on the families and organisations that help support the prison leaver. This was another thing that we used panels to do, as user research and co-design is one of the key principles of this challenge, as you'll see in our later stage. Moving on, we then had social peer-to-peer -peer support groups and goal tracking as our next two challenges, which are supposed to be self-led driven apps that prison leavers can use both leading up to and upon release from their organisation. And then finally, we had how to enable prison leavers to collect, control and share their data and how we could create digital tools to help support probation officers to work with those who had learning difficulties and disabilities. Both of these are tool-based solutions which the prison leaver can also self-lead but can also be guided to them, ensuring that we're digitally inclusive and that people who don't have access to a smartphone aren't being unfairly treated. If we look now at what is yet to come, this is the most exciting part of the project. We have our shortlisting and our piloting phase. We had an incredible 57 companies apply to this innovation challenge and our shortlisting up to 10 to go ahead into an eight week prototyping phase where they'll be working intensely to design the perfect solution for the needs we outlined already. This will be supported by the Ministry of Justice and a range of expert industries. And then the most exciting thing is the pilots that will come. At the end of the eight week piloting phase, we will have those suppliers go into a year-long steady state pilot with the Ministry of Justice. Up to four successful companies will be selected and currently we're having a lot of fun working out all the different iterations and designs of what those solutions will look like. This challenge has been unlike one we've ever gotten to work on before. We feel very grateful to have had such a large hand in designing what these solutions will look like for both the users and for policymakers going forward. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chiara and I work at Public, an organization working with government and startups uh, to build better public services. I'm here to tell you more about a um, challenge-based program called Tech for a Planet that is a, an initiative uh, run by Public together with the UK Cabinet Office to pilot and showcase new technology solutions that will help us reach our net zero targets. This uh, competition was launched in the context of COP26, um, so the international um, gathering where leaders from around the world come together to discuss climate priorities. This year, COP26 is happening in Glasgow, um, and the idea of the challenge is to align to the four main pillars of the um, COP26 um, initiative. In this case, mitigation, so set net zero 
emission targets and keeping um, 1.5 within reach. Adaptation, so protecting ecosystems and habitats, making sure that agriculture and infrastructure are more resilient to the impact of climate change. Then finance, so mobilizing finance um, uh, from both the public and the private sector and unleash investment required to tackle climate change. And then finally, a strong focus on collaboration. So bringing together different actors, public sector, private sector, civil society, to take a strong role in the talks. Um, so the idea behind this um, program is to showcase entrepreneurship and create expert opportunities for cutting edge companies. Um, we aim to encourage innovative solutions to tackle key climate changes in new ways, and we hope to inspire hope uh, among communities to encourage behavior change and a new generation of climate innovators. And of course, we want to do that, bringing together, as I said, different actors um, to bring net zero visions to life. How does the Tech for a Planet program looks like? So in uh, June, we've run a competition and invited innovative suppliers to apply uh, to join the program. We have run a selection process and then um, finally um, picked 10 very strong providers that will present their solution at COP26 in the autumn. In the next three months, these companies will be piloting their technologies with um, selected partners and build a strong case study to be presented on stage at COP26. There are a lot of um, challenge areas that we've been thinking about together with the cabinet office, and we've decided to align strongly with COP26 objectives, starting from challenge one in our homes. So finding technology that can drive behavior and change and more sustainable consumption habits in our homes. Number two, we're looking at technologies that can promote more sustainable land use and waste management practices on our farms, on our plate. Challenge three, thinking smart. Here we're looking at, um, solutions that can capture and share energy consumption data across the grid. Um, by, um, uh, following challenge three, we have engaging communities, that is a challenge area about finding new tech solutions that can allow both local and international communities to have their say on climate priorities and initiatives and really engage in, in the debate. Challenge five is around green finance. So finding new technologies that can make financial services greener. And finally, challenge six for our water is all about finding technologies that can support um, aquatic ecosystem protection. So to prevent biodiversity loss. It's been a really great competition. We have received 178 applications from companies around the world. And we're very excited to present the 10 final winners across um, these challenges. I'll just mention a couple, for example, Olio, that is a free mobile app connecting neighbors with each other and also connecting volunteers with food businesses. So food, um, unsold food at the end of the day or unused food at the end of the day can be shared for free. So building a big community to tackle food waste. Or Sweep, um, a data-driven software platform making it easy for businesses to understand, manage and reduce the carbon um, footprint. And finally, Hummingbird Technologies, um, looking at challenge two, just to give you another example, technology that detects and independently validates key farm management practices and outcomes, enabling farmers and landowners to monetize sustainability and so accelerate the, accelerating the decarbonization of global uh, agri-food practices. And um, thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.